Good evening. Hope you're doing well today and I hope that you had a wonderful afternoon. And we're about to get into again a study of God's Word on this Sunday evening. And despite the rain and despite the number that have uh, left for our summer camps, we had two groups actually leave this morning one for Oklahoma and another group to the south uh, in the hill country. We still have a pretty good number here tonight. We're grateful that you're part of that number. You're here to worship God together and study His Word. It was just a short while back that we had in one of our Bible classes a discussion on the parables of Jesus Christ. And one of those happened to be the story that we're going to look at tonight. The parable of the mustard seed, or as our sermon tonight is entitled, Like a Mustard Seed. If you have your Bibles, open up to Matthew chapter 13, verses 31 and 32. Just a couple of verses. You'll see it there on the screen, but if you'd like to follow along in your Bibles, let me encourage you to do that. Jesus says as he tells them another parable, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed which a man took and planted in his field. Though it's the smallest of all your seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and perch in its branches. What a marvelous parable here that Jesus talks about. The, one of the smallest seeds ever as you can see there in the slide gentleman's hand and he's got a handful of these mustard seeds one of the smallest seeds in the garden many of you like to put mustard on your hot dogs many of you like to put mustard on your hamburgers many of you like to have corn dogs and mustard and if you've ever been to a Chinese restaurant if you've ever tried some of that mustard it's not like the French's mustard you buy at the grocery store because they add a little horseradish into it. I ate, uh, ate dinner one time with a, a, a friend of mine from the Philippines. We went to a Chinese restaurant, never been to one before. And he put out some of that hot mustard and I thought my nostrils were going to burn off my nose. It was that hot. But notice also in the slide, as what Jesus described in the parable, the smallest of seeds can become one of the largest of trees. And there is a full-grown mustard uh, tree right there. It grows to some heights of 10, sometimes 15 feet in height. We're told that in the fall of the year, its branches become rigid, and the plant serves as a shelter for birds of many kinds, as Jesus said here in the, in the parable, that the birds come and perch in its branches. So from these two verses and from this little seed the mustard seed because Jesus also in the New Testament talks about the mustard seed that the mustard seed can even move mountains that faith of a mustard seed can move mountains what can we learn from the parable of the mustard seed we're gonna look at several things tonight and I think the first thing that we can uh, take with us in this lesson is that the kingdom of heaven which is what Jesus is talking about here. The kingdom of heaven would have a small beginning. You go back into the books of the Old Testament and the prophets of old talked about a kingdom that would be built, a kingdom that would develop, a kingdom that would be established by Jesus and by God. It was part of God's scheme of redemption. And he would establish a kingdom for his people. In Isaiah 11 and verse 1, the Bible says, There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of its roots. We're also familiar with Isaiah 53. It talks much about Jesus and his walk on this earth and his death. But Jesus is described, For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. The greatest parable or prophecy of the kingdom, shall I say, is the one that we find in Daniel chapter 2, an amazing uh, story of the development of the kingdom. The kingdoms of old became to establish themselves and develop themselves, but they were all succumb to the great kingdom of Jesus Christ. In Daniel 2 and verse 35, the Bible says, the stone that struck the image 
became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. The kingdom described as a stone which struck the other kingdoms and became one. In Daniel 2 and verse 44, this is a passage that I'm sure many of us have memorized. In the days of the kings, the God of heaven shall establish or set forth a kingdom which the Bible says shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms. And then notice what he says, it shall stand forever. The kingdom of God still stands today. I was just listening this evening to the news uh, about how Europe is just literally crumbling. Greece is just barely holding itself up. Spain is needing a bailout. There's other countries around our world that are in desperate trouble. But what about the kingdom of God? It still stands and will stand for eternity. The gates of hell, Jesus said, would not prevail against it. So the kingdom of heaven would have a small beginning. It would be described like a stone, a small piece of a rock that would come and chip and destroy the other kingdoms that we find in the world. And it did. And when Jesus established this church, we saw its great history through the book of Acts, through the epistles of Paul, Peter, James, John, the persecution of the church through the writings of the Revelation. And today in 2012, the kingdom of God, his church, is still standing. Despite all other kingdoms and all other churches coming and going, the church that Jesus speaks of, his kingdom, which had an, an elementary beginning, continues in its growth. And that brings us to our next point, that the kingdom of heaven, its tremendous growth counters its humble beginnings. The growth of the church in the first century confirms the truth that Jesus talks about in this, the parable of the mustard seed. And you'll also find the same thing when you read the next parable in this same chapter, Matthew 13, the parable of the leaven or the parable of the yeast. But the growth of the church in its first century confirmed what Jesus was saying here about the parable of the mustard seed. Acts chapter 1 and verse 15 we read, And in those days Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples. Altogether the number of names were about 120. So it started there in the room where Jesus said, Wait, and I will tell you what you need to do. There was about 120 followers there waiting for what was to take place next. In Acts chapter 2, verses 41 through 42, we see the day of Pentecost unfold there in Jerusalem. Peter preaching the marvelous sermon, the gospel message that convict and converted thousands. And notice how many. Acts chapter 2, 41 and 42. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized and that day were added about how many? 3,000 souls were added to them. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in the breaking of bread and in prayer. Acts chapter 4 and verse 4. However, many of those who heard the word believed, and the number of men came to be about 5,000. So it's continuing to grow there. Just in Jerusalem, it multiplied throughout the world. Acts chapter 6 and verse 7. The word of God spread, and the number of disciples, notice, multiplied greatly in Jerusalem. And a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith. Acts chapter 9 and verse 31. Then the church throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria had peace and were edified. They were growing. They were multiplying. And walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Spirit, the Bible says they were multiplying. And here's another word describing growth. Acts chapter 21, verse 20. And when they heard it, they glorified the Lord. And they said to him, You see, brother, how many myriads of Jews there are who have believed 
and they are all zealous of the law. Now what does the word myriad mean? It's a Greek word, by the way, which means countless. 10,000, it means innumerable. So the church, the kingdom, started as small as this mustard seed when planted in the ground. And its tremendous growth countered, paralleled, and then exploded in its humble beginnings. Next, let's note something else about the kingdom as described here through this parable of the mustard seed, that its growth is beneficial to the world. It is imperative that the kingdom continues to grow and to multiply and to seek out others to add to it. What a great joy it was in the day of the day of Pentecost when Peter, after he preached that first sermon, and the Bible said about 3,000 were added. The Bible kept talking about the growth and the excitement that was going on there in Jerusalem. And the church added daily such as were being saved. But its growth was beneficial to the world. Just like the tree, the mustard tree that we showed you just a few moments ago. It's long branches, it's long leaves, and it's uh, branches are there to comfort and to shade the birds that come into the area and that nest in its branches. And the kingdom of God is there to nest and to comfort those that are in need. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, Paul writes, but it is of righteousness, it is of peace, it is of joy in the Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 14 and verse 17. It is a joy to know that we can find righteousness in the kingdom of God and we can find peace amongst one another. And most definitely we can find joy. But also, the kingdom provides rest. Matthew chapter 11 verses 28 and 30. Jesus says, come unto me all ye who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you what? Rest. Come, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Notice what Christ says here in this passage. Not once, but twice he uses this term, rest. That the growth of the kingdom provides peace, joy, righteousness, rest. A lighter burden. We can't do it alone. We need one another to lift and carry our burdens and to help us and to help one another. And that's what the kingdom is all about. The kingdom is like that tree that provides nesting and rest and shade and shelter for the birds. The kingdom provides rest and shade and shelter for one another and for those who come in contact with the Lord Jesus Christ. The passage that we just read, Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30, is almost like an invitation. Jesus is literally inviting those to come who labor and who are heavy burdened and heavy laden. He sees that we need spiritual rest. He sees that we need spiritual comfort. And so he says, come, and I will give you that. You will find that for your souls. And then we also note that the growth of the kingdom has not stopped. The growth of the kingdom today is still ongoing. Stay with me for just a, a moment or two uh, for this uh, mathematical possibility. Now, once in a while I try to play with numbers in mathematics and I get, I get out of kilter because I was never a great mathematic, a mathematician, but perhaps you are. If we started with just 20 disciples and each of those 20 disciples won one soul, at the end of the year we would have 40 members. That's one disciple winning one soul. And then at the end of five years, 640. At the end of 10 years, 
20,480. 15 years, 655,360. At the end of 20 years, over 20 million. And then at the, year, at the end of the year 25, 25 years, we would have 1,342,177,280. I got the numbers right here if you want to check me out. But just imagine, brethren, that mathematical possibility of the growth of the kingdom. If a small group of just 20 disciples worked that number for 25 years, look at how many brethren, how many precious souls would be in that church or in that kingdom or that, that, uh, that region or that, that city just with 20 disciples each winning one. Now, think about yourself and what you could do in winning one soul and each one of us in this auditorium and if I was to preach this sermon on Sunday morning we would have more numbers but if we were to take this same principle and take it out for 25 years what would West Freeway's numbers be like if we truly won one disciple if we just won one a year, each one of us, the numbers would be mind-boggling, mind-bending. But Jesus says it can happen. For if you have the faith of a mustard seed, you can move mountains with your faith and your belief in God. Peter writes in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 23 through 25, having been born again not of corruptible seed but incorruptible through the word of God which lives and abides forever the word of the Lord endures forever now this is the word which by the gospel was preached to you the gospel message brethren was not corruptible but it was incorruptible it does not perish but provides everlasting life to those who come in contact with it. And that would be so great if we could take one disciple, each one of us, and to win one soul with this imperishable message that saves the lives of men through the blood of Jesus Christ. What a great difference. Not only this church, not only this city, would be. Isaiah writes in Isaiah 55 verses 10 and 11, for as the rains come down and the snows from heaven and do not return there but water the earth and it make it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that. That's the way God describes his word. It goes forth from his mouth and it shall not return to me void but it shall accomplish what I please and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent God tells us as we said this morning we have no excuse to go out and to do as God would tell us to do in preaching the word and reaching out to the lost soul because God says my word will not return void When these parables remind us that all will not accept the Word of God, though, this parable declares that despite some will reject the Word of God, there will be others that will accept the Word and will cause the kingdom to grow. There are several things, finally, that I want to conclude with tonight in our lesson, and that is this, of what is needed in our, in our day ahead. Number one, I think it's a need of a people with a vision. A people who look at apple seeds and count the apples. A people who are willing to put the kingdom of God first in their lives. Seek ye first 
the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Matthew 6 and verse 33. Not the cares of this world, not the deceitfulness of riches, not the pleasures of life to choke us that we cannot bear good fruit, but that we will be people with the vision to bear and to grow and to produce and to multiply. People willing to abide in Christ Jesus. He who abides in me and I in him beareth much fruit. John 15, 4 and 5. For without me, you can do nothing. And in John 15 and verse 8, by this, by us growing and bearing on the vine and bearing branches, my Father, he says, is glorified that you bear much fruit so you'll be, you will be, rather, my disciples. A people with vision, a people willing to put the, the work of God first in their lives people willing to abide in Christ like a mustard seed small in stature but great in its yield let us pray Heavenly Father we thank you so much for this night and this time that we can discuss your word and to learn more of this great seed that you have provided for us the mustard seed has many spiritual applications and we're thankful, Father, to see it through your, through your son's parables. We pray, Father, that you will help us to take that small beginning and take it and cause it to grow further. To start small, but yield big. Bless each and every one here at West Freeway. Continue to bless our leadership and our members. In Jesus' name, amen. Tonight, brethren, if you have opportunity to respond in some way to the invitation of Jesus Christ. We have a song that's been selected that will be sung here in just a moment. If you need to be baptized this evening, won't you do that? Make that decision this evening. If you have a need to draw closer to God and you would like prayer this evening, we'll be here to accommodate your need. Maybe that's a decision that you need just between you and God to go home tonight and resolve to be more like that mustard seed. A small beginning and a great yield. But tonight, if you need to respond in some way, we'd encourage you now to come as we stand and sing.